Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matthew West here, coming to you from my studio in Nashville, Tennessee, with a special message for all of my friends at Christian Academy of Knoxville, C-A-K. I loved being able to be with you for a special fundraiser. It seems like forever ago now, back when we were allowed to meet in large groups. But uh, I understand that you guys are adjusting to something called social distancing, and with that comes distance learning uh, with your school. And I just wanted to take a moment to encourage you guys with a little uh, message and song. Um, uh, one of my songs that's been on the radio this year is a song called The God Who Stays. And somebody asked me, a radio station was interviewing me, and they said, now did you plan for this song, The God Who Stays, to be on the radio while we're not able to stay with any of our friends and family? And I told him, I said, if I planned that far in advance, I would have bought more toilet paper on Amazon too. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but really the message of this song is probably for right now. It's a message and a reminder that even though we're having to social distance and distance learning is a thing now, even though we have to maybe be removed from our friends or some of our family members, and maybe we feel like we're far from the rest of the world, guess what? God promises that he is still going to be close to us no matter what. And so today's encouragement is just this reminder that while you may experience social distancing, you never have to experience spiritual distancing. God loves you. He loves you so much that he wants to have a personal friendship with you. And he promises all throughout the Bible that there's nothing you can do to separate yourself from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from his love. He pursues us. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. And he's close to you during this crazy time in our world. So I'm just going to sing a little bit of this song. And as I do, I hope you'll be reminded. Maybe even whisper a prayer. Just say, God, be close to me now. Thank you for never leaving me. Thank you for being close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. And be reminded that he is with you. He's with you today and every single day. You're the God who stays. You're the God who stays. You're the one who runs in my direction When the whole world walks away You're the God who stands With wide open arms And you tell me nothing I have ever done Could separate my heart from the God who stays You're the God who stays You're the one who runs in my direction when the whole world walks away, you're the God who stands with wide open arms. And you tell me nothing I have ever done can separate my heart from the God who stays. You're the God who stays. All right. You guys get to work, finish the year strong. I know your social learning, distance learning, whatever we're calling it, I know it's gonna go great. I know your school loves you, your teachers love you. Let them know how much you appreciate them. We gotta stick in this together. God bless you guys. Have a great day. And I hope to come to Knoxville soon and sing for y'all in person. See ya. Hey CAK, my name is Jay Smith. I'm pastor at Concord West Hills. We meet at West Hills Elementary School. We've been going for about four years now. I have three beautiful children and one beautiful wife. My oldest actually, named Blakely, she goes to CAK in, in the pre-K program. What's up, Blakes? Love you, girl. I, I'm so excited I get to open up the, the scripture with you guys today. I'm titling this devotional thought, Permission Granted. Hey, maybe if you're viewing this and you're a little bit younger, you'll really understand this. And maybe if you're a little bit older, uh, you'll remember this. You remember being told by your parents to babysit? And your parents, what? They came back and they said, why didn't you clean up after yourself? Or why didn't you do the dishes? Or why didn't you use your time more wisely? And you said, what? I didn't know you wanted me to do that. I was just doing what I wanted to do. I thought I was doing what I thought was best in the moment, right? Parents, maybe you understand uh, this in, in a work situation. There's nothing worse in a work situation uh, where you don't realize where your permission begins and where it ends, right? Stepping in and not knowing, do you have authority to make a decision or not? Do you have permission? 
That's my question for us today. Maybe as we open up the scripture, what do we have permission to do? What am I supposed to be doing right now? And as we look in the scripture, I believe it gives us great clarity about what we actually have permission to do. I found it in Hebrews 10, and it's a word that I think is so timely uh, for us today. Hebrews 10.10 says this, We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word holy means to be set apart, to be separated for a specific purpose. What this passage is saying is that we have been separated for a specific purpose regarded as other than, not regarded for normal use. You are special use. Now, uh, in a society where you earn everything that you get, this doesn't always feel very right to me. Does it feel right to you to wake up every day knowing that I have been declared perfect? I have been declared right. I've been declared holy because of what somebody else did, not what I did. That doesn't feel right. It feels like I, I should do more. I should work harder. And so sometimes I take that mentality and it feels very right. But I wake up some days and I say, man, my yesterday wasn't so hot. And so I spend part of my day trying to make up for my yesterday. Have you ever tried to do that same thing? Have you ever tried to right maybe a wrong relationship that you had with somebody else? And you try to do everything you could to make it up to that person. And it just wasn't getting better. And so you tried harder and harder and harder. And the days would continue on and on. And what eventually happened? You got tired. It was a drain. And so here's the same idea. If you're trying to earn favor with God today, based upon your merit, your actions, I believe according to this scripture, you're actually never going to get where you want to get to. You see, we've got to operate from a place of being holy, not to earn holiness. Holiness is actually imparted to you based upon what Jesus, the Holy One, gives to us. And you can receive it. It's a free gift. All you have to do is invite it. Ask him. Jesus, I need to be declared holy. I recognize that I'm not. And I need you to give me what I do not have. Forgive me and make me holy today. Fill this vessel and I will be made holy. I know it. And upon that profession, upon that realization, upon that receiving, you have been declared holy. Now, you're allowed to do something based upon that. This passage continues on and it gives us some instruction about what to do after you've been declared holy. So guys, in a day like today, what do we have permission to do? What should I be doing? I believe verses 21 through 25 give us the, the specific instructions for a day like that we live in right now. Verse 21 says, Since we have a great high priest over the house of God, that is Jesus, he's this go-between, we have a great high priest who is on your behalf for you, loving you, and declaring to you, you are right, and I'm making a way for you to be right. Because that's true, verse 22 says, let us draw near to God. That means you have permission to draw near to God. Not to earn favor, but because you have been given favor. So let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, with full assurance. That means full confidence that faith brings. That means you can have full confidence every day that you wake up. If you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ, wake up ready and, and, and knowing that you're standing before God today, perfect, perfected. And so every morning you can raise it and you can say, thank you. Thank you because I know that I'm not worthy. I know that I might have not uh, measured up yesterday, but I'm thankful today because you have measured me up. So let us draw near to God with full assurance. And then verse 23, let us then hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. That means don't let go of that. Stay there. For he who promised is faithful. This is a promise to you and he will not break a promise. Verse 24, and let us, there it is again, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good works as you see the day drawing near. So let us 
draw near to God. Number one, you have permission to draw near to God. And then number two, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good works. Let us encourage each other. So do you know what you're allowed to do? You're allowed to actually draw near to God and then not live your entire life trying to posture and position yourself to gain something you can't earn. You get to forget about yourself. This is freedom. But you know what you get to do? Not that you have to do. You get to do it. You get to encourage somebody else in the same way that love and forgiveness was offered to you as this free gift. It was free. In the same way that it was imparted to you, you now have permission to then look outward away from yourself to the world that's looking for any kind of hope right now, any kind of stability, any kind of truth. You're allowed, you have permission to actually encourage them, to spur them on, to help them understand in the same way that it was imparted to you, you are allowed to impart to them. Give them freely what was given freely to you. Anybody know who Ozzy Smith is? Ozzy Smith uh, was a Hall of Fame Major League Baseball shortstop. Ozzy Smith was phenomenal. He was amazing. And did you know that at one point in his career, he was thinking about quitting? He was thinking about quitting, and his high school baseball coach caught wind that Ozzy was thinking about quitting. He called up Ozzy and he said, Oz, you're not going to quit. You're going to stick with this and you're going to weather this storm and you're going to be all right. Ozzy said uh, it from, from that phone call, from his high school baseball coach, he decided to stick with his dream of becoming a major league baseball star. What would have happened if his baseball coach that day had not called him, had not given an encouragement to Ozzy? Would Ozzy have accomplished everything that he set out to accomplish? I don't know. But my question for us today is, Christian, church, if the encourager is not us, then who will it be? If we are not extending the hope and the love that has been extended to us, who will be the hands and feet of Jesus today? Who will be the love of God today in our world? I want to invite you and I want to maybe give you permission, not based upon what I have said, but based upon what the scripture says to us. You are invited today. You're invited into a situation where this world is, is, is looking at life and trying its best to hold on to uh, what they have deemed valuable, but maybe just realizing maybe that what they've deemed valuable uh, is it measuring up to a standard that they once maybe believed? They need hope. They need encouragement. And my, my ask for, for you and I in this season is, uh, would you be what this scripture calls us to be? And I am inviting you. I'm extending to you the permission that the word gives you. You have been declared holy, set apart with a purpose. But what is your purpose in this day? Your purpose is to extend the love that was extended to you. This is wonderful news and an exciting day. If you don't understand what I'm talking about today and you want to know more, would you shoot us a message? We would love to start a conversation with you and get to know you a little bit more and answer any question that you might have. My, my hope and prayer today is that the word was an encouragement to you that it helped to fuel, fan into flame something within you that helped you understand that you have permission. No one needs to tell you another thing to do. You're allowed, my friend. And if you say, I'm just, I'm just not there, I'm not ready, Jay, I want, you, I want you to remember this passage that says, you have been declared holy based upon what Jesus has done for you. You are that, my friend. You are that, and you have been extended permission by the King of Heaven today. This is wonderful news. And my prayer is that through this word, through this encouragement, that Knoxville, the surrounding cities, our families, and around the world is turned upside down with the generosity and love that Jesus extended to us would it be extended through you. I love you, CAK family. And thank you so much for listening today. And I look forward to encouraging you again soon. Much love.